I'm here today with Jeremy McTee and Jeremy, what, oh, well, first of all, I got to say this because you dude showed up in a chief shirt, which means he, I don't know if he's playing to the crowd right now. He probably is, um, knowing me, but, uh, thank you for being a Chiefs fan. That's awesome. Yeah, you bet. Um, so, and obviously, um, serving our country, which is way more important than football. Um, so, uh, what branch of the military did you serve for? Uh, I was in the air force. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. What, what years were you in for? Uh, from 97 to 2001. Okay. So four years four years got change. out at the beginning of 2001 so yeah. i missed out on uh 9 11 yeah, yeah yeah i missed out on that um immediately following my um uh getting out i immediately enrolled in college uh-huh. um not sure if that because when you when you when you get done with your four years of active you know you're you sign you, you're also signing up for four years of inactive yep. service and uh, with the ability to um, possibly be called into active. So yeah. I don't know if my enrollment in college had anything to do with, uh, with not being called back in, but um, you know, I count my blessings for that. I'm yeah. fortunate yeah. that I uh, didn't, didn't have to go back and do any more. So. Yeah, yeah. So what made you want to sign up? Well, I was a junior, probably a junior in high school. Um, I really had no idea what I wanted to do when I got out of high school. Yeah. I wasn't a huge fan of uh, continuing education. (laughs) At the time. At the time, uh, although it's extremely important, and I encourage everybody to to get an education if they can. So, uh, But for me at the time, being a teenager, 17, 18 years old, I'm thinking, you know, what do I want to do? So a buddy of mine uh, and myself, you know, we decided, well, what branch? Yeah. What what branch of service would we like? Well, we knew it wasn't going to be anything other than the Air Force. Yeah. So once that was decided amongst ourselves, him and I, um, that was the, the, the path we took, and, and that was why I chose it. And, yeah. Um, took my tests and um, was able to join. So that's, that's cool. Exactly. Did he get into the Air Force as well? Yeah, yeah. It was cool. kind of a weird deal. Um, we were supposed to join together in a, in a system called uh, the Buddy System uh-huh. uh, at the time. And... Uh, course you know we're, we're a day before we're leaving for boot camp yeah a day before so this would have been in 90 summer fall 96 uh we were supposed to join at the exact same time well he uh ends up failing a um a physical so we couldn't join together so we prolonged it and pushed it back into to march of 97 same thing occurred okay. failed his physical um, just couldn't do the PT stuff? Or uh, I think there was a weight issue. Okay. Um, ended up uh, packing. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Yeah, failing yeah. that. So here I'm in the trenches going by myself, yeah. not knowing what to expect. Again, we were supposed to go together. Uh-huh. That way we go through this process together as yeah. best friends. And uh, he ended up joining. He ended up able to go a week after me. Um, so that's that's kind of how that uh, wow. kind of how that all took that's place. So crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So how long did he, did he stay in for four or did he go uh, in longer? He stayed in, I think, for four years, but ended up getting a job, um, I, wonder what's going on. I believe, as a, a contract employee, uh, I think. It's been so long uh, since, uh, since I've talked to him about, you know, what he did following his, uh, his, his four years. Yeah, different path. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, different path. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, you know, when, you, when you're in high school and you're taking these exams and tests to, to find out what your strengths are, uh-huh. you know, I tested high in administration and mechanical. Okay. They're kind of two different, yeah. two different things. And, you know, I'm looking at the careers available, and, uh, you know, aircraft mechanic was one of them. And, uh, you know, administration really wasn't something I wanted to do. I wanted to actually uh, be, do, more physical, mm-hmm. do more physical work. And uh, I end up you know, being a transporter. Um, and that's what they signed me up for. And that's where they put me. And, um, I truthfully loved every minute of it. You know, transportation runs in my family. My dad's been in logistics all 30, 30 plus years. Oh, wow. And, uh, so I knew it wasn't going to be a bad deal. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Explain to me what that is. What's the transportation for the Air Force? Well, you do your boot camp, or, you know, you go through basic training at, um, Lackland Air Force Base in, in Texas. Uh, immediately following that, you're not shipped to a, a, an Air Force base to do your extended training for, for your job. I was actually sent kind of back home here to Fort Leonard Wood uh, where I would do my vehicle operations training. Okay. So, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a slew of all types of vehicles. You got 
uh, tractor trailers, uh, forklifts, school buses, um, and they all range, you know, from different sizes of vehicles. Yeah, yeah, that you, yeah. That it's logistics, like you yeah, said. Yeah, you know, you and you got to learn. You got to learn how to drive a bus. You got to learn how to drive a tractor trailer. Yeah. You got to know how to change tires on all these different types of vehicles. That's so, so cool. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. It was definitely a lot of fun. My training was no more than eight weeks. Um, and again, that time in in uh, in tech school, you know, where I'm getting this training, I still have no idea where I'm going. And I thought, well, what do I want to do? Do I want to select Air Force bases that are close to home, or do I want to really, really have an opportunity to really explore the the country and the world? And uh, I opted to do that and selected some Air Force bases that were you know, as far, mostly West Coast, mm-hmm. um, were my top three or four choices, and I ended up getting stationed in uh, Tucson, Arizona, cool. at Davis Monthan Air Force yeah. Base, and uh, loved every minute of it. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. The desert. Mm-hmm. So it's hot as hell. Yeah, very hot, you know, I mean, obviously a different kind of heat, but, yeah. you know, 100 degrees is 100 degrees, yeah. I don't care who you yeah. are, so... You know, and when you're required to wear a full yeah, that's what I'm saying. BU, you, you can't wear flip flops. Yeah, and shirts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it was warm, but you get adjusted to it. That's you know, cool. So it's not too bad. It's awesome. Well, yeah. it's like your 20th anniversary then, right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm 39, yeah. so I will have been out. Or I guess it would have been yeah, 20, 20, yeah, 20 years, yeah. 20 years or more. Yeah. So had I had I stayed in, you know, yeah, I probably could have retired by now. But uh, you know, my my immediate plan when I joined was to not stay in long term. It was to do my four years, uh, leverage the, the GI Bill, mm-hmm. um, get out and get an education. Yeah. And, and I've, I've completed all those goals. That's cool. So um, I don't feel so bad. Yeah, you know? that's, no, you used it for what you needed. Yeah. That's that's what a lot of people do, and I think mm-hmm. that's awesome. Did you get to go overseas anywhere? I did. Uh, back in... Uh, 98, 99 time frame, I had an opportunity to, to go over to Ramstein Air Base. Yeah. This was during the Kosovo War. Okay. Um, so, you know, I'm sitting, I'm sitting in Tucson, and uh, one Friday afternoon, you know, me and a couple other of my buddies are, are called in, and uh, basically it's, hey, you're, you're, heading over, you're heading overseas. At that point, you had no idea where. No idea. Are we going? Are we actually going into Kosovo, or are we going to Ramstein Air Base? What, what's our plan? And it was literally a Friday afternoon. We left the following Friday, so you had a week to get all of your other priorities in line: your finances, um, you know, somebody take care of your vehicle. Of course, I was, you know, I was young. I, I lived on base in the dorm, so I, I didn't have a lot that needed to be taken care of. So the only thing I really had was a few bills and uh, obviously my vehicle. Um, so, you know, again, up until the moment we left that, you know, we still had no guarantees what we were doing. You know, we just knew we were heading over to Ramstein from there. We had no idea. Are they going to take us from there and ship us into Kosovo to help out, be a transporter or whatever, whatever they needed us to do. Ultimately, unfortunately for me, uh, we remained, uh, stationed at, uh, Ramstein air base for two months. Um, you know, which, you know, was just doing nothing more than providing support for the troops uh, going in and out of Kosovo. Mm-hmm. So it was uh, it was a lot of work. It was a lot of driving, a lot of long hours, 12-hour yeah. shifts, six days a week. Cold? Uh, you know, it was, if I'm not mistaken, it was right before their Oktoberfest. I know it was, I'm pretty sure it was either right before their Oktoberfest or in... Did you get to do any of their Oktoberfest stuff? No, That's not really. Nice. We didn't get to do a whole lot. Uh, and I don't know if it was just because of my choice yeah, and the or, or time. Going, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, busy I mean, guy, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, you know, the time off, you know, we, we stayed local. Um, you know, we didn't venture out too far away from the base or, or anything like that. We had, a, I guess, a few off days here and there, but it was mainly just trying to, I think, re-energize, you know, and... You know, yeah, we'd head out to the local pubs and grab some beers. And, yeah. and, and you know, they, they stay open almost all night over yeah. there. So, and plus working night shifts, you know, it was really kind of a nice luxury on our on our off days. Yeah. You know, you got an opportunity to stay yeah, up. Yeah, so oh, yeah, it was It was a lot of fun. Uh, looking back, it was it was just a, a, a time where I can honestly say, you know, the, the 
the time I was in, you know, it was four years is a small time. Yeah, but it feels and, like know, a lifetime. It, it, Sometimes it can. At the time, you know, you're yeah. feeling like it's eternity. Yeah, yeah. You know, but uh, you know, I can honestly look back and say I've done I've done things that people will never ever ever yeah say that they've ever been able to do. Yeah. So it's a good way to look at it. Yeah, man. you know, I look at it, I'm very fortunate. That's for, the way I look at this job. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. In ten years, it felt like a million. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's really cool, man. I, uh, I I think you're the first one that has ever mentioned a Kosovo thing that I've had mm -hmm. in two years, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, that's really awesome. And uh, thanks for coming to lunch with me today oh. and your service and the story and everything. Man. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate the opportunity to at least uh, talk a little bit about my experience. Yeah. Um, it was probably the greatest experience of my life. Um, you know, obviously you look back and you think about basic training and it was horrible and I hated it and, and in reality it was six six weeks of my life and at the time it was like never going to end yeah and I hated it and I hated every minute of it but you know I look back and I'm thinking you know what I, I I'm nothing you know I'm, I'm proud of what I did I'm proud that I joined you got through it I got through it you know safely and you know I'm, I'm still alive and, and fortunate and Bless the way that things have actually turned out for me. So it's awesome, man. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. You bet.